This is the defining global health crisis of our time. All over the country, small traditional family farms were increasingly being replaced by industrial complexes that crammed millions of animals into buildings, standing on metal grates where the urine and feces drops to below the building. Excess waste often runs off the land into our waterways. When we cram tens of thousands of animals in these cramped, filthy football field size sheds to lie beak to beak or snout to snout atop their own waste, it's kind of a perfect storm environment for the emergence and spread of these so-called super strains of influenza. Any one of these huge farms, they're using antibiotics because if you can con control bacterial populations, the animals grow faster. And when you feed them antibiotics, you're gonna force some of those bacteria to become resistant to those antibiotics. And when you butcher those animals to make meat, some of those bacteria inevitably get onto that meat, and then those go on to cause drug-resistant infections in people. In the United States, possibly 80% of the antibiotics sold every year go to farm animals, not to humans. It's a huge factor behind these increasing numbers of bacteria which are resistant to antibiotics. Another reason, not only to clean up our diets individually, but also culturally. Animal agriculture is the world's leading driver of deforestation and habitat loss. When we cut down forests, we come more in contact with wild animals and makes it easier for the spread of viruses from wild animals to humans. Too close relationship with wild animals in the markets or when we use them for entertainment has unleashed the terror and misery of new viruses. If anything kills over 10 million people in the next few decades, it's most likely to be a highly infectious virus rather than a war. Not missiles, but microbes. We definitely need vaccines to fight epidemics, but if we focus too much our efforts on vaccines, we are fighting a losing battle if we don't change our consumption habit. If we really want to protect ourselves and protect our future generations, protect our kids, protect our families, we also need to look at protecting other animals and not treating them as commodities. We have to start treating them as sentient beings. That will not only be better for the animals, but also much better for us as well. If changes in human behavior can cause new plagues, well then changes in human behavior may prevent them in the future. So getting the animals off our collective plate would go a long way toward preventing future pandemics. It's time to take the animals off our plates and to reclaim our health. We have amazing brains. We're capable of love and compassion for each other. Let us also show love and compassion for the animals who are with us on this planet. Let us all live in peace and harmony together. Thank you. <laughs>